not your average guy never mind your own youtube channel hey everybody it's complicated how do i tell a long story short i think i am the first european tourist let it over here who got official permission these are the official documents for fpv flying i will explain how this happened in a national park so stick with me in europe it's important because this affects us all we want to fly and i thought okay you know what let's do it official because I've been in Tenerife. I've been sent away by a park ranger because I was flying in a national park. I didn't know I was not allowed to fly out there. And he said, you're going to fly here. It's going to cost you 6,000 euros if they catch you. I said, okay, okay, I'm gone, I'm gone. I published the video. I got a lot of responses on this, like blah, blah, blah. You have to stick to the rules and, blah, 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 and this and that. And I want to say one thing about it. I think the rules in Spain are ridiculous. I think the fines in Spain are ridiculous, like 6,000 to 225,000 euros. It's just absurd. I'm not going to go back there. Well, I cannot fly in a national park and I cannot do this. I cannot do that. But also I want to go to different places and not the same place all the time. So I want to go somewhere else. And of course, I'll, I'm going to have a look at what are the laws for flying out there. This is Canary Islands. This is uh, Tenerife and they belong to Spain, but here is a group of islands and it's called Azores Islands and they belong to Portugal. So let's have a look at drone laws in Portugal. First one didn't have a lot of information, but this one is interesting. Portugal's new drone laws may be short lived and it's from December 18, 2016. So when you click on the link, you go to this website and it says uh, you can get up fines between 250 and 2,500 euros. Well, that at least is a lot better than Spain. And they say, well, they have new rules, but they can be nullified by EU rules. We know about this from EASA and they have a website about everything. And that's voanaboa.com from Portugal. So when you click on that link, you go to this official government website. It's in Portuguese, but you can easily translate it to English. So this is where you come in and then it says ANAC and ANAC is Autoridade Nacional da Aviação Civil. The authority that regulates civil aviation in Portugal. What's good about this is they have a website, they inform the public, they set out rules and everything. Okay, so uh, better than Spain, because before I went to Spain, I tried to look up stuff and I couldn't find anything. I couldn't even find something in Spanish language that I could translate. So I just got out there. This is better. Okay, uh, let's go to drone code. They have a KMZ file and you can open it in Google Earth. So that is just very, very good. You can download that file and as you can see over here they have a lot of information and areas what you can and you cannot do when you're gonna have a look at azora island main island of the azores it's only the airport where you cannot fly and that is interesting what's also interesting as you can see over here they have three colors and it means red you cannot fly there but if you have orange Basically, it says you cannot fly higher than 30 meters in this area. And then here it says you cannot fly higher than 60 meters. And that is at a distance, w even within a kilometer. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. You can fly your drone, but not higher than 30 meters. If you are away like four or four and a half, uh, you can fly up to 60 meters. Have a look at how the Dutch do this. You go to the official government website. There is a map. This is Eindhoven. There is an airport here in the middle. And then in an area of 15 kilometers, you cannot fly. <laughs> so they just say like, you know what? Oh, there's an airport. Uh, you cannot fly 15 kilometers. But it's just crazy when I'm five kilometers away from an airfield. There is no chance I can collide with an airplane anymore. This is drone paranoia. The Dutch suffer from drone paranoia. You cannot fly in a park, you cannot fly in a forest, you cannot fly on a field, you can just fly nowhere. 
what can you do with it you know it doesn't make sense in iceland they say you cannot fly near an airport uh, when you are within one and a half kilometers so one and a half kilometers okay good makes sense you know no problem you don't want to fly near an airport but that is the dutch have 10 times as much when you have rules like that that don't make sense people are not gonna stick to these rules because they don't make sense okay so the portuguese did it very well very clear they have kmz file this is very good acceptable the rest of the island is kind of like free here is the drone code make sure your drone is in perfect condition makes sense no problem follow the manufacturer's safety instruction all right maintain visual contact with the drone throughout the flight never lose sight of your drone during flight only then you can control it at all times and be aware of the space around your trajectory at any point an obstacle may arise that you are not counting on okay you know simply i'll get it nobody with a camera on his drone keeps this rule nobody because uh you have a transmitter with a tablet so it means as soon as i look at my tablet i don't look at my drone anymore never lose sight of your drone during flight basically it's an impossible rule and it doesn't make sense either because a drone is not a radio control aircraft when i launch my drone it's hanging out here i can just look over there i can drink coffee i can drink tea and my drone is just hanging out there, doing nothing. I have a camera in my drone. When I'm flying and I look through my goggles and my camera, I am more aware of where I am and where the obstacles are than when I look on my tablet or when I look at it like that. But all right, it flies only in good visibility and good weather conditions. All right, of course, it makes sense. I'm not gonna fly in the rain. If you see a manned aircraft, deviate and give priority to it. Well, no problem at all. I don't want to lose my drone. I don't want to hit an aircraft. When I hit an aircraft, it's like a truck hitting a bicycle, right? Respect the privacy of all people. No problem at all. Keeps a safe distance from people and properties in order to avoid damage caused by the drone. Do not override concentrations of people more than 12. Now that is a daring liberal good rule because sometimes people come in oh you're flying over somebody um yeah because uh these things don't well my drone dji drones don't just drop out of the air and even if you fly over somebody the chance that you hit this person is very small it can happen but it's very small also they don't drop like a stone uh they have propellers when they go down auto rotation you get they go like like this so the chance that you hit somebody is very low you can get hit by a car or a meteorite or whatever too but if you fly over a concentration of people and when you fly over a lot of people that is dangerous because then if it drops or you have to land or whatever and then the propellers can hit somebody or whatever and that that's not going to be nice this rule like not more than 12 people i think this is very good and this gives you a, a bit of of space like if there's somebody biking or somebody hiking you know i mean you you don't fly above people's heads of course like 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 a mosquito like bzzz. But I think um, this makes sense. In the Netherlands, this is the same. You cannot fly over masses of people. So do not fly with more than 25 kilograms, no problem. Do not perform night flights. Yeah, okay. For me, a rule like this is don't use your bicycle in the water. No, of course I'm not going to use my bicycle in the water. Why would I fly at night if I cannot see anything? On the other hand, if I'm in a park and uh, it's night and I just go up with my drone and film the lights or fireworks or whatever and i go down what problem is there but all right you know don't fly at night 
do not take aerial photography and filming without first contacting the National Aeronautical Authority. What? The rules for capturing images and making videos are governed by special legislation. Gee, so I can fly but I cannot film. It looks like Sweden. It's like if you fly with a drone, with a camera, you are breaking privacy laws by definition. So you cannot even fly there with a camera on your drone. And here it is, you cannot make videos. Whoa. That rules out Portugal or I have to contact them and ask permission. I think overall it's pretty good. But there are two problems. I have to look at my drone all the time and I cannot film. So if ANAC authorization is necessary, you must sub submit a request to do this. You have to download a form and you have to do this 12 days in advance before you're going to fly. You can download a form over here and you can request what you want to do. <laughs> okay. You know, thumbs up. That is just excellent. If it's like this, let's just ask them permission to fly FPV and long distance and ask them if I can film and publish this. All right. So this is a uh, common questions. My drone has a camera attached, allowing you to maneuver at great distances, sometimes losing uh, line of sight. Do I need authorization for this type of use? Yes, you do. Okay, so let's ask uh, permission. So we go to the RRN website to get permission to film aerial images. Forms, there are two forms. So what I did, I filled in the forms. I asked permission. I would like to visit the islands. Here are the forms. In, it's going to be big promotion for tourists, of course. And then I got an email back like, uh, where exactly do you want to fly? Uh, would you please give us coordinates, etc. And like two days later, I got the form back with all the information and the signatures. That was easy. Now, the other thing, can I fly FPV? Um, okay, I got to make a long story short. He's asking for a lot of documentations. Then they said, where are you going to fly? I don't know where I'm going to fly. I'm a tourist. I'm just going to explore the island. I want to see something. If I see something beautiful, I think, oh, I can film that. I'm going to fly that. I cannot say in advance what my flights are going to be. I try to provide as much information as I can. I thought, okay, I flew eight kilometers in uh, Tenerife. So let's, let's try to do 10. And then they asked questions like, what are you going to do, this and that. But somehow he doesn't want to give me this or whatever. It took a long time. I send in photos of what I was doing and explanations. And I got the emails back. And so I'm going to call him now. Um, hello, you're talking with uh, Peter. I'm looking for Jao. Pause. 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 Uh, Jao? Pause. No. You don't know him? Yes. He, he's, um... Uh, on... Sim, mas foi agora que chegaram, doutora. E o senhor está aqui à frente. Foi mesmo agora, porque eu estava a ver por aqui e não não estava nada. É verdade, doutora, juro, não estava nada. Então pergunta ao senhor se não foi um minuto só, ou menos. Um, hello, you're talking with Peter. Um, <clears throat> I'm looking for Joe. Uh, he, he should be on phone 224. 
This this is the Portuguese Civil Aviation Authority or Okay. You you are the Portuguese Civil Aviation Authority or uh, uh hello, you're talking with Peter is, is, yes. Is this Jaro? Uh, yes, I am. Ah, hello. Well, hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> uh, we've been emailing uh, a couple of times, um, uh, and I I run a, um, a YouTube channel, um, yeah. and I I would very much uh, like to know what I have to do to um, uh, do FPV flying on the Azora Islands. Uh, we're still analyzing your request, mm -hmm. but uh, 10 kilometers it's uh, very long for for the FPV. Uh huh. Uh, I can tell you that uh, by now. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, if you would say like eight kilometers or six is the maximum, you just tell me what what the limit is of what we can do, and that that would be fine. Okay, I'm still analyzing your request. Okay. Um, I'll try to have an answer by today. Okay, by that would be today. very nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you the limits and if you can or cannot fly FPV. Okay, that would be okay. very nice. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, bye. Have a nice day. Yes, yeah, same to you. All right. Nice guy. He's looking into it, 10 kilometers is too much, but it is something. He's still looking into it. He had said, I'd try to answer you today. I waited for another five, six, seven days. I did not get any response. I sent another email, no response. And then I thought, yeah, what am I going to do, you know, going to cancel the whole trip. I sent in a second request and I said, okay, let's make things not so complicated. Let's just, I, I just want to fly FPV and you tell me how far I can fly with this. And then they came up with this. Okay, you can fly FPV, but 500 meters is the maximum distance the drone can move away from the pilot. Wow. All flights must have at least one observer. Wow, so I cannot even go alone. I have to have somebody with me who sits next to me all the time. All right, the battery charge should be limited to 60%. Below that, the drone should ground. Wow, 60%, why, why is that? I seriously, I have no idea why they say this. It means I can only have flights like eight minutes or something. The drones shall not overfly housing or populations, right? And if the wind exceeds five meters per second, the operation must be canceled. I've been flying with a lot more wind than that okay i replied to this email and i said okay you know all's good i accept what you say but can you please drop the 60 percent battery level because that limits my flight time so much that it's just i got the answer back no that's not possible this is the rules that they said and this is what you can do i said okay and then a couple of days later i got the form back and i can fly fpv like that but they also said you have to write the local authorities about what you're going to do over there all right send them an email took a long time but in the end i got an email back i can fly there so the thing is what am i going to do with this on the one hand this is a victory this is a, is a big big victory right because i think i'm like the first tourist who has official permission to fly fpv in a national park somewhere in europe so that is just incredible this is the way to go guys this is 
fantastic. I think it should be a lot easier because this was difficult to do. And I'm going to tell you, not all tourists are going to do this if it's as difficult as this. On the other hand, it's like, this is, this is an amputation for me. It, this feels like an amputation. Like, I can only fly 500 meters. I have to have somebody next to me to sit and watch all the time and just do nothing while I'm flying. Because what, what, what is this person going to do at 500 meters distance? Well, anyway, uh, the 60% battery level. Okay, so with rules like this, the FPV community in Portugal will stay underground. They are not going to ask permission to fly like this for every time they're going to fly or want to fly. So I think Portugal, you have a couple of very good things, like the way you set it up with the forms, making it easy to contact you. But you need to be a lot more liberal and, uh, and give a lot more responsibility to people more than you already did. It's good, but it's not enough, in my opinion. Nevertheless, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over there. I booked my trip. I'm going there. I'm taking my brother with me. We're going to have a good time. He's going to be my observer and everything. So, and, and what I'm going to do is stick to these rules. And we're just going to see how, how that's going to work. If we can live with it. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. I really would like you to give comments. What do you think of the, the rules and the limitations that they gave me for FPV flying? I'm going to send the link to the video to them. And I want them to see it and read it and learn from you guys. If you want to see the Azores videos, subscribe to my channel. And of course, like the video because then it will go up in the YouTube charts and then a lot more people will be able to see this too. Thanks for watching and see you on the Azores.